All right, everybody, welcome on back to the Cinema Lords podcast. This is going to be our House of the Dragon episode four review or recap, I should say. And uh, it's going to be a big episode today. That episode this week was fucking crazy. So I'm very excited to talk about it. And it's a big show because we also got uh, three of the Mina fans in the house. We got our own little round table, my own small council this week. Uh, I got Luke, got Mick, got John Scranton. Boys, what's going on? How are we doing? Doing well. I'm going to say it first. I said it first. How I was waiting. You? I was waiting for yeah. someone to say it. I'm doing really well. Everyone's so polite. Yeah, it's a huge thing when you when you just throw it to the group. I love when people throw it to a group on this. Oh, group. there's going to be a lot of that with me. <laughs> yeah. Doing well, buddy. Good. I appreciate having all you guys here. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. So thanks, Hat. Thanks for coming. Oh, yeah. What did you guys actually before we get into this week? Let me get where you guys all were as like going into this episode this week through the first three weeks. What were you, how was your vibe to the show? Like, were you enjoying it? What were your thoughts? Anybody? I thought uh, I thought episode three was a little slow, um, just compared to the first two. <clears throat> Excuse me, episode two as well was a little bit slower. I thought episode one was fantastic. Um, maybe not a ten out of ten, but probably probably give it an eight out of ten. And this most recent one, I won't go too too far into it, but I would give it probably a ten out of ten. So as far as the season goes, I'm not disappointed. I was getting a little frustrated because it was getting a little slow between episodes two and three. I guess they were kind of setting it up and plotting, but uh, episode four did not disappoint. Okay, pretty much exactly how I feel, boys. No. Luke, John, I got a problem with this show where I, I, like I just can't remember anybody's name. That's so I, I only really like, but I don't know what it is. I got like a mental block with this one in particular. Might be because all their names are kind of similar. Yeah, half yeah. of them have the same name with like an S at the end. Yeah. So, so like, I, I kind of go more off of just like appearance and like, you know, like I just called that one guy the Doctor Who, Damon, I think. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just like mixed that it seems like every other episode is kind of more exciting. And then, you know, we get like our kind of set up episodes, which it's kind of been par for the course for the series so far. The first season I struggled with, honestly. Yeah. A lot of um, setup in the first season. Yeah. It, it, I think when, um, you look at when this is all done, the whole series, and you and you go back and watch it. Then you're gonna appreciate it all a lot more. Bring when up you have the whole picture. Point. I I just restarted watching all like season six through the end of the old Game of Thrones, and I was like a semi hater of the old show. And like when you watch it just in a sitting, and if you kind of take the perspective of like they kind of knew the ending, we didn't. It's actually not bad how they ended the show. Like they did what they had to do. It's actually not a bad rewatch. There are some dumb things, but, and I think the same goes with this. When we get it in one sitting, I think it'll be great. But like we're all, every week we expect like dragons to have sex and battle yeah. at the same time. Right. So it's right. like, yeah, we're always a little let down. But this last episode, obviously 10 out of 10 battle. It's the first time dragons ever battled in Westeros. Like you can't. Yeah. That. Was this the first time like <laughs> there's ever been? in westeros dragons battled basically like full battle like that's in westeros that is so right. it's like that it's shot cute. of uh of vagard and uh Melis, like circling each other oh, in the sky yeah. was it ridiculous i was like this is like i felt like i was at war I, you know it was unbelievable that's huge because so like in the book for this episode yeah in the book they just say like no one knows what happened it's just like in the clouds right. you just see is circles of shadows and fireballs <laughs> like so like they did a great job with this episode i disagree with mick i loved last episode i thought a lot of people did yeah, I lo I loved it. I thought like it was the first time like this show found its footing, which is a setup episode. Usually Game of Thrones finds its footing on setup episodes like when you, that's when you realize like oh shit, the show's good as fuck. Like their setup yeah. is good. Yeah. But uh but yeah, I think this episode knocked it out of the park. Like great battle. Christian Cole is just a fucking cuck. I hate him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was no. you guys went a completely different direction than me. I was going to ask if that was like the most graphic simulated blowjob there's ever been on, <laughs> uh, like a TV show or a movie. It, it was pretty animated. I mean, it wasn't even really simulated. It looked like it was just blowjob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that, that, that shocked me. I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, whoa, <laughs> damn, wild. Ooh, I'm shocked. I said, like, I was kind of dis not disappointed. I really loved episode one, two, and three. Like two, I wasn't surprised was a setup. Three being another setup kind of surprised me. Yeah. And I even said, like, I didn't need this full, I didn't even need this full blown battle that we got at the end of this episode. I actually liked enough of it where at least I thought like plot lines were actually moving forward. Like Amon and Aegon have a real fucking divide now that's oh, very yeah. noticeable that you can see. Damon shit took another step forward. 
there's a lot like the um, the Allen guy too, which was a storyline that I thought was kind of just random and we had no real like subtext of it or anything like yeah. that. That so got a little like bit of footing he, this week too. So is he confirmed what? this bastard son? Like I, I don't. I, yeah, I, I, it I, seems so that way. Background. I, he's gonna end up being a dragon seat. I think. Yeah. What background? Yeah. Because he is. He he turns yeah. into him and his brother does too in the books. I don't know how we are on spoilers, but uh, um, that's not a spoiler. It's in the books. They can go a completely different way. Make one of them a dragon seat and one not. But there's six dragons that are unclaimed right now. So it's like at a certain point in the show. And I think it actually starts next episode. They start looking for the seeds. So see, that's a storyline I'm very interested in. Yeah. Well, so they st they started to introduce. Don't have you don't have any background on the actual Dance of the Dragon story. You're just watching this raw, basically. Uh, yeah. For the most part, I've done some um, like the two fucking literal textbooks that they fucking came out with. I've done a little bit yeah. of browsing through those and shit. So yeah. there are names and stuff that I recognize that I just like. I don't necessarily know exactly what that like. Um, that Hugh the Hammer guy. Like that's a name that I know from reading certain shit. I don't know exactly yeah. where he's gonna fit in and of it, but he's I know he yeah, plays that, a role. Like they're setting uh, yeah, up that's what I figured. All of these new characters that they're introducing, I assumed were a lot of like people. Targaryen guy last week and shit. These boring storylines, like it's actually because they're those boring storylines that are going on right now, like the hammer and that kind of stuff. Like they're actually just showing you a massive part of the story down the road. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. like. This is actually cool for somebody who knows, but it's if you don't know, it's kind of like, what is this guy in his house talking to his wife about food in the city for? You know, it's but it's like that's a massive part of this story because the city starves at one point. So so that's huge, you know. And you saw that today or this last episode, like when Damon's having that dream, you see when he passes that goat. Yeah, you know, no. to symbolize like the dragons are just wiping like they're going to war with these dragons and they're just wiping out the food <laughs> like in the whole yeah. country. So I, like, is that I the opening that dream? Goat. Yeah, opening dream. He walks right past this goat just eating in the middle of the throne because none of that's in the book, by the way. So that's all completely new territory. The what the, the dreams? dreams? Yeah, yeah, it's in there. I love that storyline too. I don't know about. I you. like it too. It's cool. I was again. I was shocked when I saw Millie Alcock. She's so hot. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, um, that's the kind of shit I like to know, though. Is stuff that's not in the books. That's like, yeah, yeah. That they kind of taken. Like so I'll just stuff. tell you with the with the fight there with Vagar and uh, I don't know Meles or whatever. Yeah. They end up um, in the book the way it's described, but you have different narrators in the books, and yeah. they're they're all unreliable. Is that like right. basically when Damon and Vagar come in, they they try to break it up and they like body slam both of them, all three of them to the ground. So and it, obviously in the show we just watched he grab he may, they they make a point of him saying Dracarys and burning right. his brother. So yeah, right. I'll be curious. I think his brother's gonna live. Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, is he gonna remember that his he brother? Does. He does. Spoilers. Yeah. So is yeah, he gonna I'm remember his brother? I'll right? make sure. Like any spoilers, I do. So like this is stuff that's established. Like I know there's storylines that there's not established. I won't say any spoil. But like that's a like he is a very important part of this story. Like he does. Well, they showed him at the end. With yeah. The exactly. If you don't out. see a dead body in this show, then yeah, what, you can almost yeah. guarantee they're alive. And Cole yeah. stopped him from going over with the sword. I mean, that yeah. was the most telling True. part. Like, he was ready to kill his brother. Right yes. then and there, and become uh, is is Agen now with Jaharis dead? Is he next in line? Like how? Did, I'm not exactly sure how it works. Would but be would be next. Yeah, in line, because probably. he only has a daughter now in the show. Right, I so it's no use for for Aegon. In the books, he has one more son. He would be able to right. go to, but uh, I thought so they showed that storyline that's in the books. Like Aemon's basically takes yeah. the takes the saddle yeah. here now for yeah. a little bit. So people were saying that. And cheese storyline was different from the books because there is no second. Wait, what was that? You broke up a little bit. People were saying and cheese is different from the book because she has a second son to pick. Yeah, and this is only the one son. Right? Yes, in the and book, that, that the picture, I'd imagine it go to Eamon. She's able uh, to pick between two sons, but they just showed it as a son and a girl. She had the two mm -hmm. sons and a girl in the books. It's just that girl wasn't an option. Yeah, which if she was given an option between the two. A boy and a girl like what kind of idiot didn't say the girl <laughs> like, <laughs> i'm sorry it's a pretty dumb move though but yeah especially for someone who has visions of the future i would have to imagine that it is why i actually i don't know it's a good question yeah they're gonna introduce uh darren here pretty soon too probably in this next episode i don't know if you remember they mentioned this kid right my like my son in uh old town yeah, or yeah. the grandson in Old Town when uh when the hand auto goes back there. That's what it was. 
Yeah. He mentions this guy. I think they're going to show up next episode. Yeah, they said he was going to be in this season, so I'm looking forward yeah. to that because, like, that's the thing about this show. Like, there's almost an overload of characters to the point where people might lose grasp of who's who. But once you yeah. get a grip on who's who and who's who's brother, like the fact that now they're introducing it, like, you're like, well, I'm hyped for that because I've been waiting. Like, that changes right. the whole story. There's, yeah. <laughs> you know, your whole view on things and shit like that. So, like, he's a big part of the story, too. But they could go any way they want. Like, this Wood Witch story is a little different in the books I'm but like how they're showing, interested in all that yeah how they're showing it basically in the show is just through these dreams and so it's they're just showing how haunted heron hall is plus this witch being there is a lot to do with it too but in the books it's really just damon pretty much goes mad like the, everybody goes mad in the, that castle I got a lot of questions about that lady because she, okay. they, I mean, I'm not sure if they're trying to do it intentionally, but she's eerily similar to the red woman from Game of Thrones. Um, and the way she speaks is very similar as far as the way she sounds. So I don't know if they're going for like just trying to confuse people and get them, you know, thinking. But I was, I, she's going to play a major part here, I think. She's more of a, she like a. Riddles. Yeah, she's yeah. more like a witch of old God. So like she would be like a Westerosi witch, a wood witch. Like, you yeah, know, I think. I think what Mick's saying though is they did they, they did sort of frame her the same way they framed the red. Oh lady. yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. like I, I got the same thing when I first saw her. I immediately thought of the red. This lady. show has a problem. People. This show has a problem with doing. They make their characters try and reflect a character from the original series. I'd say almost too much. Like okay. let them be their own characters. Let us make that kind of judgment. Like yeah, like she is kind of like the red, but like in actuality, she has no, nothing like the red woman. You know, like mm -hmm. that's a whole different type of magic right. and religion and shit so it's like but yeah they have a problem with doing like jamie lannister is damon and blah blah you know like there's a lot of just clear reflections yeah, yeah. of old I characters you. i got you yeah I mean, uh, what are we making of actually especially as you guys said the damon dreams are in the books so we had two two big scenes as far as him dreaming this week that's why they actually opened up the episode was with a damon dream yeah. Uh, he cuts off fucking Raynara's head, the young version of her, like you said, fucking uh, Ali Mitchcock. What do you guys make of these dreams? I thought the uh, the one of him chasing Agen was even more like uh, it, it was like a version of Agen. It wasn't even actually Agen. It was, it was like a yeah, it was a, an older Agen. version of him, yeah. but with the Very eye. Patch. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if, he hasn't know. seen him in years. Is that why? So I was going to yeah. say, is it because he hasn't seen him in so long? Is that you can't yeah. really remember what he looks like? It's all. Oh, surreal. really? Oh, that's so cool. Where their, I like that. Eventually, where their battle eventually takes place is called the God's Eye. So that was also meant to uh, foreshadow the fact that that battle is going to, because his eye is, because it's actually Damon and his eye is taken out. It's meant to reflect Aemon, but also reflect that this battle is going to go down at the God's Eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I just took that as like Eamon obviously looks up to Damon big time. So I thought there was something there. That's yeah. why he, like he saw it as himself. But yeah, I do like the idea of him just not remembering what he looks like because it's been fucking whatever, 20 years yeah. or so. Yeah, I, I love the dreams part. I love the uh, I, I love that part. I love that whole Heron Hall storyline, man. I'm like, I'm so, the fact it's just a haunted castle and shit, man. When he is with Alice Rivers and her little like potions room is do you think like is that a dream or is that reality do that's the point of them though they they work on the basis of in between so like that's why right. you know when he just wakes up in the middle of a conversation i didn't know if that was real how either powerful her magic is like he doesn't yeah. even know first of all if there's magic going on let alone like he woke up not knowing if yesterday started or today begun yet so it's like that damn this bitch is crazy <laughs> yeah, she's very powerful she, she seems yeah. to know what she's doing but like she, there is a character just like this in the old show, Maggie the Frog. She's the one who gave Cersei the like prophecy that her kids were gonna die and shit. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The world is very powerful in magic. Like it's I think that either it opens like up a, a season or closes magic. Down a season. What's that? I said that either opens up a season. Yeah, open, it's like yeah. I think it's open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After job, um, we also get to see uh, the kid from season one during the, the well, it's not during the Damon dream. It's when he comes out of it, I guess. But uh, the Blackwood kid, he's all yep. grown up now, fresh yep. off the stabbing that dude in the fucking. That was great. That was great. That was great. 
this, so, uh, this show has a bunch of younger kids in it too, which is great. I love that because they have a lot of responsibility. That's the shitty thing about this war. It took place when like everyone's Lord was like 15 or 12. Like that's right. a big problem in the realm, you know? I thought, that's, um, oh, sorry. I, know, yeah. you're right. I thought for both for this episode, both Aegon and Jace, <clears throat> I think you kind of you get to see what they're both all about. Where Aegon, you know, he gets yelled at by Allison by, you know, basically like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I, I'm the king. And she's just like, just just be, do what you're told. You know, your, your job is basically to sit there and do nothing. Shut you up know? and dribble. You're right. Where, <laughs> where, you know, yeah, yeah, shut up and dribble. Yeah. <laughs> but. Well, my, my point is, is uh, he seems so frustrated by it where he's willing to do something crazy because all he wants is just be like accepted and be looked at as a real king where Jace is, um, you know, he's the heir to the throne and he's willing to put himself on the line before Renera because he's like, you know what, like, you can't do it. And he, he values like the, the actual throne of it. And he, I don't know, it, it was so telling where Jace was willing to put himself at battle and, and nobody trusted Aegon at all to go to battle. And, and, and I don't know. I thought that was pretty telling. They do such a good job of character building. So like just the fact like his family line. So you think like that guy who is his actual father, like he's all in all honor guy. Like I'm I'm running first in a battle guy. So like that's why that son's like that. And then like it's I, they do such a good job. Like this family acts this way. All of them will somehow, some way, right. a little bit or a lot of a bit. You know, I love that about this show. He's so good at that. And like detailed, like he goes all the way down to the color of their clothes. It's detailed, like you know what I mean. Like for sure, no, yeah. And like it, it, they make it so apparent that at least with Aegon, like at times he seems so miserable as like a king, and like you can just see it on his face. And like uh, you know, it's he's supposed to be like the most well-respected person, and he really isn't. And it, it, bo- yeah. it can tell it bothers him. You know, yeah. I think the only time you ever see him really happy, I saw this online, so I'm not taking this thought. Uh, I'm stealing this from somebody. I don't remember who. But the only time you really ever see him like smiling and happy is when he was with his kid, who's now yeah. dead, Jairus, and then or when he was with his dragon, who's now also dead. Yeah. So I mean, that was really because you get out in that scene in the most recent episode, the dragon kind of you know nudges him. I forget the name of it, but it nudges <laughs> him, in the chest and, and he starts just like you know he's smiling ear to ear, and you can tell he actually has like a and drunk him. drove his dragon. It's like a big <laughs> dog. But too much right. in danger, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> you could tell that dragon's like seen him like that before. He's like, oh shit. All right, we like that. Let's go, man. <laughs> blurry, lot of blurry rides for my guy. He's like country ride. <laughs> yes. Leo landing his helicopter in uh Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do drive home the fact, even with on his dragon, that he doesn't do Valerian. Like uh he gets embarrassed by Eamon yeah. in the small council meeting, and then they kind of I really think push that too with the whole like the whole last say 15, 20 minutes. You hear Eamon talking to Vagar and Valerian, you hear Rainey's using words other than Jakaris talking to her, you know, saying attack. She's obviously fluent or you know, in Valerian, you got Aegon, who's the only one talking to it in English or whatever. You know. Yeah. yeah, that that goes to uh, at the end of the episode when he's he's kind of bitching to Allison about stuff and he's like nobody respects me and she says like well why should they? Yeah, that's been that was a huge he, point, he, huge yeah, theme of that episode. He, he didn't put the work in. Yeah, he right. doesn't know how to speak the language. He he spent like I remember the times you saw him early on in the show. It was he was jerking off out the window. He was yeah. he, yeah, he, he yeah. raped the servant girl. Yeah. He, he was like he you know he, he uh, wasn't they, working. They do a good job on throughout all of Game of Thrones and this show. Like he does a good job to show how like maybe the right guy is just one person away from the guy who has it. And he even may have qualities that won't make him good. But they like always show like the right person's actually just your dumb system away from you guys having the best guy. But this is the way the system goes, you know? And that's a big over theme in this fucking show, especially because Rhaenyra is not supposed to be queen. She's a girl. Girls you said lot. one thing a minute ago, John, about like sons following their fathers and shit like that. And I think that's very evident in like, say, Thrones, which we've seen a lot of families. But that's kind of I feel like what they say about the Targaryens. They say every time one's born, they like the gods flip a coin or whatever. Like that's why there's so much sporadic difference between fucking different ones. Like the king that came before the series is ruled for 88 years. He's the yeah. best. Like we're listening to the book right now and we're on his chapters like. He's the best king, like from right. when he was 10 till he was 88. He was an awesome king. Like the the only issues they ever had was can girls be queen or in like they had that big council about it and blah, blah, right. blah. So like, but he made the like the there was the most dragons, the most Targaryens when he was king. Like, 
So mm-hmm. like, Nies mentioned it, it last week to the council. She said that uh, he had ruled for the longest peaceful transition for yeah. whatever, even more so than Aegon to conquer. Yeah, he's called the old king, the man, Jaharis. Jaharis the conciliator. So the same name, yeah, same name as the kid that got his head sewn off, right? Yeah, tough. <laughs> Real tough. tough. Kind of <laughs> similar. <laughs> They're, just cutting the head off. They're basically cutting the head off of the like, basically the dynasty that he built. Like that's basically a fucking a good foreshadow of that. Uh, I kind of mentioned Rainey's meeting Alan or, you know, coming across him at the docks, which I did think. So it, I got the impression that a, obviously he is the bastard, but I also got the impression that Alan knew that too, which I think explains kind of some of the other scenes that we've seen from him, like necessarily wanting anything toward Corliss or wanting to even convert. I kind of got the impression that he was kind of almost standoffish. Like you weren't here my whole life, dad, like kind of fuck you. I only because it was my job basically to save you. Yeah, I, I could definitely get that feeling as well. And I think the one he's talking to, um, I'm blanking on her name. What's the what's the older aunt's name? The one who died. Rainies. 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 Yeah. When he's talking to Rainies, it almost seems like he wants nothing to do with that conversation. Meaning like, mm-hmm. you know, he knows who she is. So I think that they're definitely trying to imply that. They So this is like a story, book storyline kind of a thing. And like how I said, they're, the boring stories might be actually some of the biggest. Like he what they're just kind of figuring out and showing everybody is like, she's telling, he saved Corliss Valerian's life. Like he should be raised to a higher, right. a higher rank. Yeah, that was a good he, line from her. He's not doing it specifically because he knows it's his bastard. They both know he's his bastard. Right. But like, and this guy, this Allen guy is so honorable. He won't say anything about him, blah, blah, blah. So like, they're kind of showing that, that even Corliss Valerian, who we all think is just this doll in the weeds, you know? So, that he, even he has some fucking issues too. Like he sure. can't he can't raise his bastard to a higher like he should be given drift mark. That whole the whole family should be his. He has no heir right now. So it's right. like just holding him off and then he eventually rides a dragon. So yeah. The uh, fucking Corliss, no love for his grandkids at all. Not zero. Yeah. yeah. No loyalty. Not. Like, what's the, what's <laughs> like what the hell, grandpa? What the fuck? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, he's, like, he's a legend in the in the story. Like Corliss Valerian's a legend. Like he sailed like his fleet's legendary. But he's he was like, one of the guys rumored to get his own show, basically. Uh yeah. was, I think it was he gonna could. be called the Sea Snake. Yeah, it would be oh, sick. Oh, I would be so down for that. Right. That would be fantastic. so many cool parts of their worlds. Like there's I so do many- think that one got canned. Yeah, Dunk I think so. They canned everything except for this and Duncan Egg, I think. Duncan Egg is going to be Egg awesome. And, What's Duncan Egg? Uh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's the uh, the tall... Oh, God. They so, mentioned Night of the Seven Kingdoms. Of Thrones. Looked at its base um, it's I think it's like, like a three... Buddy a buddy What's comedy? That? I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's like Duncan Egg's kind of like a buddy comedy. It it is. It's like a it's like a uh, so they're Uncle traveling Buck. around doing yeah. Like it's an Uncle Buck school. style comedy. Okay, it's, yeah. I'm yeah, in. It's, I'm all in. It'll yeah. be good. But it shows another great Targaryen king when he's a kid, when he's like a hundred people away from the crown. Yeah. So, like it's a cool story, bro. That's a, if I were to read a Game of Thrones book, read Duncan Egg, man. It's awesome. So, I, that was yeah, one of the shorter I, reads too, right? I think that one's only one of the short stories. There's a couple short stories. Yeah, there's there. there's one that everyone knows about, and there's two that came out after that they don't know about, but then they made one book that's all of them. That's what I got. I, the yeah. three part all in one. Yeah, it's a good story though. It's fucking. But even then, it's still not that long. So. No, when uh, Joffrey's making fun of Jamie, and he talks about how uh, Sir Duncan the Tall has four pages in the White Book, and Jamie Lannister only has one. So yeah. Duncan the Tall is Dunk from Duncan Egg. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Well, that sounds like it'll be a good time. I like the I like a buddy comedy and fucking great. Game of Thrones. That sounds like a good time. Yeah. yeah. The, so the Jon Snow one's officially gone. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank God. God. As you said, I didn't have high hopes for that. So no, they shouldn't do anything with the modern timeline or like yeah. with the you know, no. yeah. They should just the only like modern timeline I would want is possibly if they do it good would be Arya going west. I would save oh, that for like okay. 10 years from now. Make that. Yeah. Like, let, like, let wait, yep. This world so you can build a better future. What's going to happen next kind of a deal. Like let our generation of kids make those, you know? Yeah. So we have something to look forward to and don't fuck it up like Star Wars. <laughs> so a good tide jump would work because like you figure, it lame and figure out East. East would figure yeah. out West at some point. What's yeah, worse? Exactly. One person it's makes like, the journey. Yeah, exactly. There's nobody who has made it past the the Western Sea. So it's like you have that whole opportunity. That's all of like what they consider Asia in their world. So it's like that's you could do a whole samurai story in Game of Thrones world. Can you imagine, dude? Oh, how just that would be? Oh, yeah. 
Jesus. Say, I just started Fire and Blood, actually, and I saw that Rainey's. That was one of her dreams to do before she died, was to fly to uh, whatever's west. Yes, yeah, yeah. I just, I just broke that bitch open yesterday. That bitch, dude. She's the best. Rainey's? Yeah. Yeah, she's like, I just bang anybody I want. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a... There was a call. That's why I love Cersei even more in the books. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, there was a callback in this episode. I, I noticed. Um, so I rewatched episode one after I finished episode four last night. Just I, I was playing a game. I wanted to see some for another hour. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Rhaenyra and um, Damon have that fight after in the in this first episode after you know the, the kid gets killed at the end of the last season. Yeah, and uh, Rhaenyra basically. And, it, and I kept thinking of it because her ghost is like, you ruined my life or whatever. Yeah. She uh, she kind of figured out that Damon want, doesn't see himself as the king consort. He sees himself as the king. Oh, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And then when they're at the, when they're in Heron Hall, what's his face? Keep call, keeps calling him Prince. And oh, he yeah. says something like, you know, he says something like, oh, I didn't know, you know, because you're the consort. And he does. So they're really driving that point home. Oh, right. yeah. That's Alice a, that's calls a, him on it this week, too. Yeah, yeah. The, his dreams are that's why he's cutting her head off like the crown falls all that shit like she's a young because he fell in love with the young girl she's wearing the older Rhaenyra's clothes like there's a bunch of hidden yeah. symbols in that shit too if you get real deep into it but yeah no the whole point is that like Damon was passed over like a hundred times by now he's basically yeah. Mick <laughs> he's yeah. basically you know, that's, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> that would cry <laughs> Ricochet shot a half right there. It is, it is, <laughs> in an honor, Damon's the man, dude. Like, and trust me, he goes to like he's a fucking legend, bro. But it's it's that's what this meant to show, and like he kind of only teams up with uh, her to become the king consort, and then even that's not good enough for him, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of showing that. I think all like everybody that's watching this show, I think the majority of people would probably say Damon's their favorite character. You think Carm? That's Carm, my girlfriend's least face. She hates Matt Smith's acting in this, and she doesn't really. Hear his ears. Okay. Yeah, she hates his ears. Doesn't understand the Heron Hall thing, but she understands Game of Thrones more than any of you. Trust me. But she doesn't get the ghost story stuff. She's like, "But okay. where is it coming from?" I'm just like, "It's haunted." That's the point of hauntings. Like right, you don't. Right. They're very good at that. Like they don't give a reason for a haunting. No one. If there are ghosts, why do they happen? We don't fucking know. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite parts of this episode because I'm very into like as far as this whole world goes, I'm very into like the magic and the witchcraft of it. Yeah, they kill. And obviously, they a lot of in a lot of time, even in Game of Thrones and this show, they hint at like you know Harren Hall being haunted. Yeah, there's no well, content because, on it at all. And this week, you find out it's literally built on a weirwood forest. A weirwood forest. Right. He's yeah, and they say Damon's bed is is made of yeah. weirwood too. Yeah, it's wild. That and I mean, uh, Aegon the Conqueror burned it, and everybody burned yeah. alive inside of it. Like, True. so there's a lot yeah. of pain and suffering. In that. That's yeah. what I said. I said that to Karma. I was like, well, just like. It, you know, who, who would be haunting it? The thousands of people that have been killed there throughout time. Yeah, like, right. fucking whorehouse, like legit, yeah. like a murder scene. The whole thing, it looks like, and that's what I think they're just driving home. And that witch being there, and the fact that, like, literally, like, Heron Hall is built next to this God's Eye thing. That's like a corner of magic in the world of Game of Thrones. Like, that's where that's the, children, the children, the, the, forest, the, the children in the forest, and the White Walkers uh, finally met. It's where the children of the forest and the first men had like signed a pact to stop having war. It's a, that's a huge thing about game of Thrones, the original series that they never showed the God's eye being like where the series ended. They should have. And everyone hates them for that. Like everybody expects like that's where game of Thrones will end. It's the God's eye. That's where everything ends, you know? Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, that's why <clears throat> I definitely mean thing about that. And that fucking humor book. Yeah, you're breaking up. I said, I definitely remember reading about that, uh, The God's Eye, and that humongous yeah. textbook thing. Yeah, The World of Ice and Fire. Another yes. great read. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's a fucking, you... it's literally a textbook. Yeah, it's like 800 pages of history, like yeah. about a fake <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys at with uh, with Cole at this point? I mean, I know Simulord, Lord, you, you've, you've hated on him before. Is, is he getting your yeah. I think he's actually becoming like my least favorite character in this, <laughs> like in Thrones. Like I despise this man so much. <laughs> At least like Joffrey is 
like there's a couple times where he does shit where I'm like laughing. I'm like, all right, this guy's crazy, but he sometimes sometimes he makes me laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ramsey Bolton's like one of my favorite characters in all of Thrones, so you're not gonna get to that word about him. Yeah. But I just I cannot stand this fucking guy. I love <laughs> the one thing I do appreciate is that every single chance he gets to throw salt on Reynara, he takes yeah. every oh, single yeah. 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 Dude, He loves calling her a whore. <laughs> dude. He loves he's still he's still the word, dude. <laughs> he's single handedly bringing back the word whore. Yeah. Yeah. And even his troops, it's just like, like yo, like, he really <laughs> seems like he pissed off about this. Bitch. Yeah, dude. It was like, she never called back, bro. It's okay. And I mean, he was willing to sacrifice half his army to basically just get burned alive for last episode. You know, yeah. that was that yeah. was the plan. You know, uh, Allison's brother walks up to him and is like, "What did you do? This is crazy." And he's like, "No, this is all going to plan. Don't worry." And like, yeah. he's just seeing his guys get ripped apart. It's yeah. Just like, well, that's oh, kind of to show how, well, first of all, like Christian Cole is basically running the realm, right? Like all he's running the realm. He's making the, all the moves. Seems so, like him and Egan are like working yeah, together. Yeah, Eamon are working well, so he's together. He's doing a pretty good job so far. So this was to show that Kristen Cole and no one in the that world right then knows what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to Dragon War because look what happens when you try to plan for Dragon War, dude. They show many times in that episode like Eamon is killing his own soldiers just to kill the other soldiers. Yeah. You know? And one time they just are fighting and they hit the ground. There's tons of the green... Yeah die because of that yep, just because yeah. the dragon hit like this is to show and like cole falls off his horse and like he almost died it's to show that cole knows nothing about what he was talking about cole is basically built to just be the biggest cuck in the book like he is a loser <laughs> like, yeah. just a fucking twad the worst he does give imagine. i will Oops, sorry, he gives ahead. a good Go speech he gives a hell of a speech to get the guys going before that war. You know, when, when he sees um, Aegon on, on this dragon and he's like, your king has joined you. I, I was actually getting a little fired up. I'm like, maybe I'm going to like Cole. And then he gets his ass kicked right off the horse. And he's like, Perfect. exactly. What he doesn't know what he's representation doing. of pussy could ruin a man. Because yeah. like <laughs> before and after pussy, that guy is like, I'm talking before he ever touched it. He was the man. Touched yeah. The monster he is now. Like he's yeah. a monster. Just a monster. <laughs> That's the yeah. point they don't bring up really at all. Rhaenyra corrupted him initially. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Right. Yeah, no, it's her fault as well. Like, yeah. hey, that's just one love triangle that's now spiraling yeah. into else's problem. Books, you know? That's more on the head. Like, in the books, it's like Rhaenyra is like trying to hook up with this dude and he keeps turning her down like yeah. three times. And then on the third time, someone catches them. So, know how you said the books are oh, right. from two different stories? One person says that it was happening the whole time and he was lying, and the other person says that that was the only time and it never even really happened. Right. But that's basically the storyline of that. See, that's the kind of shit I mean, that I'm, I know a lot of games. very confused Thrones. about reading, I feel like. I have like they my did doctorate. it a little. What is it? I have my doctorate in Game of Thrones, dude. I could tell yeah. you anything, bro. I, could, I knew all the kings in order at one point. When that's did you start reading them? What, what, how old were you? I was a. Like high school? Sophomore in high school. So 2006. Mm. Fucking yeah. The first book came out in like 96 or something, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the last so one came out in 2005, right? Wasn't Dance of Dragons? The last one came out in 2011, I want to say. Oh, was it? Oh, my yeah. bad. I think the one before that was 2005. It was like 2009, but 2005 right. was the one before that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't start reading them until I think the end of season six. Really, I think so. For like four so years, I just so on the first. That's smart. I, 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 so I'm, I'm wondering if I should do that or not because I, I'm not a big reader, but I'm so into the series where I just downloaded the audiobook of um, Blood or Fire and Blood, the first, the, the first yeah. one, right? Yeah, no, yeah, that's what I just, that's what I just that's cracked basically open. a history yeah. book too, but that's just about the Targaryen king. So how we were talking about that other one's like basically a history book of the world. Mm -hmm. This one's just dialed in and more story about the kings, whereas the other ones, the whole world, they talk about everything. So, you should uh, get the Game of Thrones books. On yeah, you should just do the original just series and first. Listen to those. And, yeah. You think so? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Game of Thrones books, like I, so I did the same thing. I watched the show before reading them, right. and I, there was a lot of storylines that aren't introduced in the show where I really enjoyed, and I was like, all right, I'm so glad I'm yeah. reading these. Oh, there's so many better storylines in the books. Oh, yeah. Gotta, yeah. Like, there were things I like better and worse, but like for the most part, I like the things that weren't like that just weren't a part of it, basically. 
Like yeah. I especially um in the fifth book is where they introduced Dorn big time. And I was yeah. I fucking loved that. There's nothing that I want a series of Dorn so bad. There's nothing that doesn't tie in and like everything virtually, geographically, time wise makes sense in the books. Every story whereas the show would just have take liberties on that. Like yeah. how did she get from here to here in that time? And yeah, that, right. How does a fire priest die by freezing you to death? That's weird. But like that's where the book's like he's fucking i can't imagine what his like organizational system is to make sure he doesn't fuck up when he's writing because it's like you have to know what is happening everywhere to even that write guy, he's got a crazy brain he's got it all he's he's got well, he wrote himself into a corner he can't get his way out that's of it. what it is there's so many yeah. stories he doesn't know how to end them yeah. it's really what's happening right now he just likes world building so that he mm -hmm. churned out those encyclopedias like no problem whatsoever yeah, yeah. there's no it's just he can Broad. make character names. He can name them yeah. after anything he wants. But then, like, yeah. when you have to be like, all right, well, then where does this end? And how does your magic yeah. end? And how does this? Like, I had all together, right? Yeah. That's hard, which is understandable. But, like, I think he has an advantage where, like, the Game of Thrones world shows the world or shows the viewer, like, the real world, Ned Stark gets, a, Ned Stark gets his head cut off. You just have, when you least expect it, you yeah. know? So it's like the bad things happen no matter what. It's like, I always said it, Game of Thrones should just end where the world ends and it's just a black screen. Boom! And the, like, blows the fucking okay. Sopranos, like that. I think it's awesome. Oh, all right. Uh, let's see. We see Cole beheading some guys. That was shit. We see like the scene I talked about where Eamon's fucking embarrassing him in the small council, talking some high Valerian. That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Yep. Uh, we see Damon dream again. We see the Allison scene. Let's go into the actual battle i guess itself yeah you see uh so obviously this whole thing's a trap which i obviously God. would have worked out perfectly if Aegon doesn't fly in on sunfire like an asshole Drunk. but i the thing i'm obviously i think most people and myself are most confused about is why rainice decides to like turn around and go back when like she's clearly off she's free she's scot-free she can head back she knows her dragon's the biggest. She knows it's the most battle tested. She knows it's important. So There's why go back into a battle you know you can't win? I, you know, I I thought it just was her like mentality. Um, you know, being just like a warrior and being like you know you know because she says to the dragon right before like you ready for battle like we're going back into war old girl or something like that. I'm sure there's more of a deeper reason, but uh, maybe she just saw a Targaryen on a dragon and you know wanted to take him out. Yeah, she told the queen that she told Rhaenyra that she was coming back winning. She can't like that's like she remember, this is the first dragon battle that ever happened. You can't come back the loser of that, bro. Right. <laughs> you know, you can't come back the one that ran. So she I think she herself. She's she, a bad bitch, too. Right. She doesn't yeah. think she's going to lose. You know, like, she did oh. do mad damage to Sunfire, though. Like Sunfire is out of the oh. they already had a dragon advantage. They already got more dragons than the greens do. And right. she effectively, for the most part, at least badly damaged Sunfire. We don't know if it's dead or not. Right. Badly damaged it. That's that's a victory. Like you burned up some of Cole's guys. Yeah. Fly on back. Be like, yo, they set a trap for me. I got out of there. I fucked up Sunfire. That's still a victory. Like I she's also like a way more experienced fighter at this time. Like she's an ex more experienced dragon rider. All this is like she's a Targaryen, bro. She's not just being like, that's good enough. You know, I think yeah, that's that's right. She's probably their best dragon rider. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 I'd imagine so. Other than Damon, like Damon and her would be equals. I would say if anything, she actually has the better dragon. But mm -hmm. yeah. right, right, right. I was gonna say, fucking, we saw it uh, week three. As far as actual flying goes, I feel like that scene with Bela was the first time where I actually noticed somebody was like flying their drag. It yeah. seems like everybody else is kind of sits on the back of it. It goes wherever it wants. They go Dracarys, and then boom, it lights shit on fire. Bela looked like she was actually like steering her fucking. She, you know, she was driving manage, that bitch. She has a more manageable drag. Like you have to think, Amon's oh, playing sure. that old bird dude this thing is like a grand yeah, yeah, yeah. A crabby old grandma right now you could barely tell it what to do like at one point you'll beat it from your grandma you can't get it started get it to go and it won't go like the trap didn't really go right he tries to get it to go and it doesn't so he has to wait but like yeah. that's the like to show that some of these dragons are more maneuverable but some of them are just like you saw the size difference like if oh you put, they are is huge yeah they do and such like, a good job of that some of them have longer necks. Some of them have longer, more vi like brutal tails. Like they're they're all built different. 
in their own unique ways and shit. So it's like they all use them the fucking specific way they are. They're built basically. I love that scene in the end of season one when Lucas he thinks he gets away. Yeah. And then you see the silhouette of Vagar yeah. behind him. Oh great shot. It's a great that is very good shot. Yeah. They do kind of a similar one this week where it's the two dragons flying at each other, but it's from on the yeah. ground. Right. Yeah, so that's yeah. awesome shot. Big thing in this episode that and I said this to Carmen, like this is a huge like piece of news in the whole world of Game of Thrones is that Targaryens can burn all of them other than Daenerys. She was the only one who can not burn by fire. That's what I was thinking all about. Yeah. All of them can burn. Yeah. I assume Which, they couldn't because there was a lot of that going on this any week. Sense. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they said that at all because all the way up until they, like George mentioned this this week, he said, like, up until then, there were Targaryens that could and there were ones that couldn't. And it's like, now all of a sudden, the only one was Danny. So it's like, but there oh, were yeah. kings in the past who have drank wildfire thinking they wouldn't die because they're. Well, the remember, they, they, uh, Khal Drogo melted the gold to kill the brother because he didn't yes. think. Yeah, I think that was partly because he didn't think he could burn it. Like the, the, yeah, was exactly, Targaryen. exactly. I so that why that, that. Didn't happen? You know what I mean? Like fire doesn't kill the dragon. You know all that yeah. stuff. So what do you guys talk? Like I think that was a horrible play. Real yeah. weird. That's a great point. I I was kind of wondering about that last night. Yeah. And it was just mentioned this week. Like they like that's like updating the lore. <laughs> like what the fuck? Retcon. Yeah, what you gonna do? I thought. I, um, I feel like um, I don't hate it though. I don't hate it either because how this story ends. Trust me, it needed to be that way. So, yeah. What'd you say, Mike? What were you gonna say? say for this episode? I thought uh, one of the more telling scenes too, or, just, or I guess kind of goes along with the cinematography and how they set it up. When um, when Renair is telling Jace the the King Aegon dream, and it's just showing like the battle going on in the background, and it's like her narrating what's happening and you know why she's doing all this and how Viserys told her and you know whoever told him. I thought that was fantastic. I was like, I was literally getting goosebumps. Like, this is going to be crazy this next 20 love, minutes. Love that scene. But when she said, it's called the Song of Ice and Fire, I was like, oh. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, yeah, yeah. I swear that was a, uh, not a real line in the book. Yeah. Eight <laughs> seasons of the old show. It is in the book. But, like, they spent the whole time of the last show, like, no one knows that story. Like, that's why the show is called the Song, because it's a secret. And, like, in this one, they're just but everyone fact, knows. it's everyone it's in everyone's yeah. face it's it's yeah. so disgusting but that scene was awesome how they did that it was beautiful i thought a big thing along with rainy's strapping in that was very very cool yeah, see. i like oh. <laughs> the um when may lee scratches sunfire it like flies downward and it leaks blood out all over like the battlefield no. And like the blood that lands on the soldiers, they yeah, burn. Yeah. Like if they burn, it's yeah, like, turn it. I, I didn't know if it was like fire blood or acid or some shit like that. But oh, I fuck. thought that was very cool. I didn't see that coming at all. I was like, oh fuck! Like, yeah, that adds I another that. A whole another fucking dynamic too into the battlefield and shit. If you have huh. all these armies charging at each other and the dragons flying overhead, this is the thing that's probably going to happen pretty commonly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, dragons we'll like hot oil. Yeah, dragon blood is like a magical property. Like they use it for spells and shit. Like it's a very magical, sh like potion. I will call it. like, and it's yeah. I would say it's mostly like hot oil, basically. I'd assume it was. Uh, it was. It was sweet. Guys. It was sweet too. And he put his hand on uh, the burn guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Weird. And like yeah. the ash, the ashes that like collapsed. That, that was, was awesome. awesome. So was that, that was Allison's really brother? Was that was that who that was supposed to be? Oh, I don't. Great point. I have no idea. I don't know I how know he, know. he does say his name, and I thought that's he's, who he was referring to. Or he says someone's name. I don't know. I think he calls him brother, maybe, but he's carrying maybe. the uh the whoever it was was the flag standard guy. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. So but I thanks. thought Allison's brother was gonna be a problem, but he wasn't. Nah, yeah. He uh he and he had no resolution at the end of the last. I don't know what happened. So he could I didn't even think about that. That could have talked to him. Today. I thought of it today. You, that's a great point you brought up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like he was the guy that actually like claims Rook's rest. Like he was the one he like got through the battle. He went up to right to the castle. Was able uh, to like, saying, yeah. get success. You know what I mean? And he's like, yeah. "Where the fuck was Cole at?" And he was like, "Oh, look at that! You're here, dude. Cool. You missed the whole battle." The point of this battle is that after this, Rook's rest is obliterate. There's nothing. 
There's, it's like dragons are nukes. Think of dragons as nukes, and then you're right. fighting nuke with a nuke. So anywhere this happens, it's just gone. Right. So that's like what they're trying to show. Like, there's nothing really. They're claiming the victory. Like, there's no one that won that fight. They try to say that at the end of the episode. Like, no, you can't say any side won that. Right. You know? So, and that's the point of every dragon, but there's no one that wins. You're just hurting your own family. And do you see next episode? They're just dragging that cart with the head through it. And yeah. Like, Dude, you're hurting your own family by doing that. That's what I was thinking too. I was yeah. like, that's a crazy move. Like yeah. your sigil is literally a dragon and you're, you're dragging. Them. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, it's ass backwards. Them. Like a hundred years from now, it what's going to happen to these dragons is because of shit like that. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, the source of your power is shit like Vagon. Yeah, it's, so like it's literally dragons and you're that, that's a weird move. Yeah. Weird move. Weird. That's like a Stark carrying one of the dead wolf's heads through the city after they took it back. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. So weird. Oh, I think that was pretty much. Oh, well, I guess they do keep all the skulls. Yeah, but because they, they honor them, they, they, they keep them as like statues. Yeah. Like, they, wish they pray to those things, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. shoots a bolt through it. <laughs> <laughs> the best scene, dude. I'm realizing those old episodes. Cersei or Khaleesi, Cersei. I mean, Cersei is such a baddie, dude. I would oh, oh, hey, I love the best. You're on Joy because he's like, I just want that pussy, dude. I just want <laughs> pussy. Probably like my favorite second. She's in my top favorite characters of Thrones. Top three for sure. Yeah, she's a badass. Yeah, she's fucking my number great. one. Easy number one. I just fucking, I told Luke the other day, I need my cats, Ramsey and Cersei. Two really? of them. <laughs> <laughs> Two absolute that. psychopaths. And they actually act like it most of the time. They're fucking oh, crazy. Yeah. Right. I, I, I brought it upon myself. What can you do? <laughs> um, I guess it closed out. We have Cole. He wakes up, goes over, finds Aemon over Aegon. So you guys think that he was... Pulling out his sword until Cole got there. Oh, yeah, he's gonna shank him. Shank him. Yeah. yeah, he was gonna shank him. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna fuck him up. He should have. Should have. Well, I like, thought they were gonna let it get closer too. I thought I thought maybe he, you know, he's gonna ignore Cole and just keep going, but then like pull away at the last second because he knew that Cole was old. But um, yeah, no, it seems like it seems like Aegon or uh, Aemon has no use for his brother at this point. It doesn't even care. I mean, you saw him, he he told his dragon to light him on fire. He didn't give yeah. a fuck. Yeah, Bottom. which I find a little bit surprising because it seemed like even though he knew his brother was a moron, he kind of still was like fam. Like he was very, that's you know, by the book. Like I, he's my brother still. He's the king. I want to make my right. family proud. That's literally to show the breaking point of where that just went down into the pooper. You know, like yeah, that was yeah. I think it was the hooker. Yeah, uh, they just show up in the hostel or they show up at the brothel. I mean, and brothel, uh, yeah. One of them, and I don't know if that was like leading to it, but you could tell it pissed him off, but he didn't really show it. He kind of had to like walk out and be like, whatever. He so that was sort of like um, the uh, Unsullied where they're going to the brothel and they're getting like mothered almost like yeah. he's laying there on his side. She's yeah, like yeah, stroking yeah. his hair and yeah. stuff. Yep. So. It's a good call. But yeah, they have a shitty mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Real shitty mom. <laughs> <laughs> can we like, like, like on two like, separate occasions she's like amen you know what he is like yeah. <laughs> would even won't even call him out for what he actually is she's like, he's such a monster i can't even say it out loud <laughs> basically told her other son like just shut up and let me do what i want you little cunts yeah. like yeah she uh and i don't like the girl that plays her i don't like that character at all at all like i don't like allison the older allison yeah, really? I don't. I think she's don't. awesome. And I think she's she, supposed to be older than Rhaenyra. That's the big, po like a big point. But she looks younger than Rhaenyra. To be the actress, yeah, is. she does, and it like changes yeah. a lot. Like the yeah. and Rhaenyra really aren't friends in the book, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Just saying, early on, ever like she's an older like she was taking care of the king. It made more sense. Like, know how the king marries like his daughter's friend? Like that's real weird. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's not in the book. She's like an older lady. And like the second the king dies, she just claims like none of this. He told her the secret and stuff is in the book. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I think he, he, he just closes that. the doors, bars the doors and claims that her son's now the king. Right. And Rhaenyra can't get to Dragonstone because she's the rightful heir. And then yeah. all this shit goes down from there. I would yeah, imagine they did that to, like pin them against each other. Right. What's like, that? I would imagine the show did it for like promotion reasons where you can have those like posters yeah. of like Allison and Renera on one side. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. very just like Hollywood. Same. 
they did it to build the storyline everything up to here a right. lot faster basically i was doing of- recaps for season one and like i think it's episode one Raynar was like laying with like her head in her lap and she was yeah. like trying to yeah. get her to come for a ride on her dragon so not like I'm not even talking about them being friends, which you just said was not in the books, which I think is crazy. I thought when I was watching the last show, I was like, right. Renard I might have a little, little something. I thought something there was going to be like a lesbian. I thought there was oh, going to be a sure. lesbian thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I get that vibe. Absolutely. For, just from the pilot episode, though, like not which, any ever again in the entire series. If I got that's, that vibe. Yeah, yeah. That's which true. changes the whole like when she goes to see her in King's Landing to try and stop that war. That in the books, that's meant to show that like Renard is actually the better person here. <laughs> And she goes to King's Landing, sneaks in, and like I think it's okay by, by having to. It did, it did, they did, but it changes the whole perspective because she's not her friend in that. But like, she goes to do this, and like, not because she's her friend. Like, she knows that this is going to go well. It's because she's willing to risk. She's like, I have to stop Dragon War. <laughs> like, I can't be the one that starts it. You know, so like, mm. she risks everything not for her friend because she knows she'll be a safe like that at all or some dream that's right wrong. you know it's just because she's not risking but the show then takes it further and says well the dream was a big part of it and you didn't know because that's a book you read you know right that's well then and they show allison looking for the books remember she gets mad at um, oh good call yeah she's like why did you get rid of viserys's books like what you know so i would imagine that it's related to her almost feeling stupid, like, you know, why don't I know this? And Renera when does. the clubfoot comes in and he sees that she's drinking the fucking plan B tea, <laughs> yeah. she's, yeah. she says yeah. the same thing. He's like, I didn't realize you were, uh, you had a love for the histories. Yes. So yep. she was already going through books and then she went and asked Aegon for more books. Yep. Yeah. She's like, where are these books at? So, yeah. So she clearly wants to know what's going on. The yeah. emergency awesome guys, like, yeah, she's basically just mainlining Moon Tea at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, please. I totally thought the, the club foot seeing that. I was like, oh man, he's he's due for a little foot stuff. Pull those babies <laughs> out. He's seen that shit. That guy's so creepy. <laughs> he really is. So creepy. I love that the uh the guy that's overwatching Harren Hall for him right now fucking knows too. He he knows he's a scumbag. I love that. <laughs> yeah, oh, he totally does. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that guy. I, I don't I don't I mean, know why. He's, he's basically a not a character. Yeah, he, oh, he's yeah, good. I love him. Yeah. Even like um when Damon would actually, which was a good scene too. Uh, Damon's talking to the little kid. He's basically like the envoy for the old man. Yeah. And he tells him to fucking suffocate him with a pillow, which was yeah. great. Yes. Like, yeah, for me, you know. what, what are you talking about? I love my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, for real. But even after the conversation, like Damon walks out and like, like the old, uh, the strong guy, he like looks over at the kid. He was just like, good yeah, job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> Yeah, that guy's <laughs> Damon first takes the takes over. He's like, uh, I'm taking um uh what's the name of the place that he's Aaron, Aaron Hall? And he's like, I guess you are. Yeah, like, yes, you are. He doesn't even Enjoy. try to it. you got it, dog. Yeah, I loved it. No point point, at one point. What do you want to know? I got you I got the 411 on everybody around yeah. here. <laughs> at one point in the past, the that old king I was telling you about, Heron Hall is like someone is holding Heron Hall and his like aunt just comes back to the city and he needs to give her a castle and instead of like asking a lord to leave his castle he just gives her one of the towers at heron hall and they never know <laughs> it's that, <laughs> that, big. It's that, like, big. that like there were there was six guys in there and one cook and there it's built for ten thousand men the castle alone so it's like it's, yeah. it's an insanely that's like to show like how heron hall is just this useless thing in the middle Empty, of the right yeah yeah, it's just we see that thing get turned over in Game of Thrones like that's, yeah. five or six times. Yeah, probably. it's yeah, it's a liability, and they mentioned that. In it's basically episode. the uh, the professor of dark arts and Harry Potter. How no one can position the same thing. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> Laris mentioned that in the episode when she's like, "Why?" You know, Aegon's like, "Why aren't you?" Or yeah, his name is yeah. like, "Why aren't you pissed?" He's like, "Well, because it sucks. It sucks. It's a giant liability. It just tears yeah. you down. It takes a lot of resources to maintain it." To maintain, like, not only to maintain it, they would have to full, like Damon said it in repair. one of the episodes, like, we would repair it. We repair this. And yeah. you can't man that castle because it's so big. Any guy could, like I said, get into one of the towers and you don't even fucking right. know, dude. Yeah. So it's like, if you can't, you're spread so thin that you're fucked. It's, I love, that's one of those small, subtle things that, like, he just drives home. Like, no one's getting this shit, dude. <laughs> like, you get it for 10 years and then you get your fucking nuts chopped off. I love the 
more information and more details they're giving us about Harrenhal. Harrenhal is a place. That, like I said, I'm a big fan of the magic aspect of this show. Yeah. So Harrenhal intrigues yeah. me big time. Because that's something like the book readers knew about Harrenhal, where the show, like, they didn't have time to tell you the history. But like when they're there, right. the original show, it's like it's supposed to. Be, it's a horror. Like, and not only like that shit's going on. They're also killing people in the courtyard to ask them mm -hmm. questions and shit. You know. So it's like that. It's just a cursed fucking place. Yeah, I love that you're seeing inside of it more though, and everything now though. Yeah, I'll say the one last thing I kind of had that I took away from this episode is I anytime I see the cat's paw dagger, which is the dagger that ends up killing the Night King, I get mm -hmm. like a little perked up in my seat. So we talked about like the end of Thrones, and while I didn't like like the way they did it i didn't mind that it was brand like i didn't mind that it was brand the three-eyed raven that ended up on the throne mm -hmm. it was just how we got there mm -hmm. so like i like to just whenever i see this dagger i just like to think that like there's somehow some way the three-eyed raven is basically watching like right now and just making sure oh, that dagger 100 percent like that's the goes best right part. along the line that it's supposed to right. that's the best part of the old seasons like the end of them like every time a new a character gets to winterfell brands like they have a scene where brands just like awkwardly skulking in the corner looking at them like as a if few times yeah yeah he's seen them in the shower like 900 times you know what i mean so <laughs> it's Ed, that's that's a huge part of that but like that dagger is what has the prophecy right karm brought this up like that has the prophecy written on it and if it oh. heats up the prophecy is shown so does aemon now know the prophecy because if he takes that dagger he's gonna see it he could they've been driving home the point that he could read valyrian real well that's true know? yeah Aegon, that is that's a good and, i like that yeah Aegon can't so he probably doesn't even know about it so it's like yeah it's hot it might have just naturally happened too like you said like yeah exactly the dragon fucking falls to the ground explosion of fire or whatever then Aegon's laying there with the blade it just naturally fucking comes out Aemon picks it up reads it I like and, that. That's, and Carmen that's just brought up. Allison hasn't even told Aegon the prophet. Like she can't claim this prophecy is why he's on the throne. Like he doesn't even really know that prophecy right now. Mm -hmm. You right. know, so it would be Aemon who finds it out if anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying Allison just knows that it was Aegon's dream, or you know, yeah, that was right. it. He doesn't know anything about it, right? When yeah. Rhaenyra calls her out for getting the name wrong because she's a dummy. Uh, she doesn't know anything about like she doesn't know anything about the dream or anything like that so but rhaenyra does also now know that allison was not lying oh yeah yeah yeah, a, yeah. so yeah, that, right. that was pretty interesting yeah that's a good point yeah. a huge, like her face dropped in that she's like did, did he yeah. say it that way or yeah yeah her face her like stomach dropped it was great yeah great scene now I wonder what that means for Jace going forward. Is Jace just going to be kind of protected at all costs? Is he going to be? Because I thought Jace was going to be fucking one of the guys leading. Like obviously Damon, head honcho, but then I thought that Jace would be basically the number two as far as I can leading tell you. Army. What, I can tell you what happens, but I don't uh, want you to. Yeah, yeah. please don't. Yeah, <laughs> I want to find out. She does, she does something to me. Like it's all. It's all in this next episode. I think it's going to be just as big as this uh, last episode. It's great. I love oh, battles, okay. battle episodes in Game of Thrones, but the episodes after battle episodes are usually the yeah. better. Yeah. It's always good. But, like, yeah, yeah you're going to like how that storyline goes for sure. Definitely. Hell yeah. He's the man. I like Jace. He's like, oh, yeah, he's not yeah, he seems cool. I'd like yeah. to see more of him. He's just not doing much yet. Yeah, his dad was the man too, like a good dude. <laughs> Nothing like just having a good dude in Game of Thrones. Yeah, he right. I move you. He's like one of the only likable people that doesn't have a big fault or anything like that. Like, yeah. he just yeah. seems like he means well. Yeah, and like yo, I could be telling you something that does happen, and they're gonna do something. That's the best part of this story. Like, yeah, never know. George always tells you a story that's from a third person's point of view that might be wrong, anyways. So yeah, it's, yeah. the show can go whatever way they want. They they have the luxury of that because of that exact reason. So it's like I could tell you exactly what happens, and that will not happen. You know, it's not like who uh Jon Snow's actual name. It like it's completely different, you know. Yeah. We talked about that like different viewpoint thing actually earlier and how people interpret it different depending on the character. We saw that big time in season one with the scene where Cole beats the shit out of that guy to death. Yeah. Like Damon Raynara about the kiss, the King's watching it, but then that outbreak happens. You don't know why or what happened. It's off screen. You also don't know if they kissed or didn't kiss. Yep. Yeah. 
that was a big time. Like I feel that's a uh, huge, that's a huge part of example. the storytelling because like Luke said, all the books are told, all the chapters are a character's point of view. So like this chapter is told by Davos, this one's told by Jamie Lannister, this one's so like, you're seeing all these things happening in the world from that character. So you're getting to know them more plus right. what's going down you know so like that's a genius way of fucking storytelling i yeah it is very cool read books now that aren't in that writing i'm like cursed because of it like, right but that's uh that's how it and, and it's great because you get to see some randomly like you get podrick's point of view on thing you know that's yeah. awesome mm -hmm. like that's awesome you know right is it uh is it three and four or four and five i think it's three and three and four you just get like complete it's, like half the people aren't in the book know, literally at all it's so brutal. That's because that three was three and four. That was one book. They split into yeah. two. It's three and four. Yeah. yeah Feast for Crows and a Storm yeah, of Shadows or something. One yeah. half of it quite is quite literally half of the characters are just not yeah. in the book. And then the yeah. second one of four, the other half of the characters are just not in the book. One half is that girl that's the Dornish or uh the Dornish princess. She's the worst. Yeah. Uh, See, I like I don't even like her, but I love Dorn's I right. love Dorn. I love like <laughs> I want to show that so bad. It's just fucking. It's just. I never like Dorn. Woodstock. Goes, fucking. What he is goes, it? Burnt by a dragon, dude. He goes in like yeah. he's like, yeah, I want that box, and then he's like, tell that dragon to blow his fire at me, and he's like, burnt to a crisp. <laughs> he gets fucked murked by a dragon and that dragon is like who <laughs> who dude <laughs> a great storyline in the show they were like you know what how about we just have these three bitches stab the oh guy man it's so bad too. dude the Granted, sand snakes are yeah. so lame in the show it's so bad. i have a question for you who had better uh titties that sand snake or melisandre like oh, the sand Melisandre, snake. dude oh wow quick calls from both oh, of us yeah, those are undefeated days. those things are so oh, good yeah. But the sand, one sand snake is hot too. Oh, the, she's fantastic! But that's, I mean, that scene's hot. very good yeah. too. That scene's great with Bron. Yeah. He's yeah, going. He's like choking out. It's a great yeah. scene. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, they they I like I said, the, I would love a fucking. I don't know. I think that they're going to do that thousand chip series. I think that'll be pretty I heavily. Going, I'm pretty sure that right? would be cool because it's so. There's a war between where the Targaryens came from like them and what is considered egypt in their world like old gis which is like an old civilization that the targaryens wiped out and then this girl takes all these boats and beats them all and then makes it to dorn basically it's a great that's story too. the the woman nymeria named uh nymeria the name the yeah. wolf after yeah yeah, Ar yeah Arius wolf oh, i saw this they scene. mentioned her story i feel like a couple times actually oh, that's right. how um that's it's how this show story. started House of the Dragon. Oh, yeah. You show Alice and Raynara are reading the yeah. um yes. book. Yes. That's right. Um, I knew they mentioned it more than once. Yeah, that's a huge part of the like that's where like Dorn, they all went to Dorn and then she burnt all the ships and yeah. It's a big ordeal. Yeah, free love. They like to fight and fuck and fuck and fight. That's I love it sounds like a good time. Whenever Dorn is threatened with war, like whenever the aggressor shows up, everyone disappears. They let them take the cities and then slowly just murk them one by one. And then it just, it's just a waste of time war. And they just repeat, like, go back to their shit. It's like, where do they go hide? <laughs> like, like Afghanistan. Exactly. That's showing <laughs> Afghan the Afghanistan war. Unbent, unbowed, unbroken. Yeah. There's fucking chemical weapons there, dude. <laughs> the awesome princess dies, though, with the dragon, the Wagon's wife. Oh yeah, uh, Lena. Yeah, we actually we saw her again this week. I have no idea why he, she would haunt Damon. We don't. At least we don't. Maybe it's something off screen, but they don't do a lot of that in the show. But I don't. From everything yeah. we saw, it seemed like Damon and Lena were in a happy relationship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at least yeah. the throne standards. Yeah. So yeah, I was kind of confused to see her haunting him. Dreams are fucked up. I love anything that goes into dream content. Dreams are fucked. <laughs> she wasn't doing much either. She was like, it wasn't like she was right now or like saying these wild things that, like, you know, she was just pouring cups of wine. Yeah. I saw a uh, KFC did uh, this thing of talking about uh, who would your starting five Game of Thrones players be if you had a basketball court? That's a good question. Like, who would your like starting five be if you had to play basketball with Game of Thrones characters? Take Allen, obviously. Yes, I take Sir Duncan the Tall. Like, there's uh, there's so many good picks. 
Mm. That's a good draft. If we did, if we weren't an hour in, we like you can do a whole episode. Yeah, I guess it goes a while. I, yeah. I, I, I know he's not. Uh, you said Game of Thrones, but I, I'm telling you, Damon would make a hell of like a a wing three. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, it'd be like oh. a yeah, it'd be great. People be bouncing off him, bro. Yeah. Dude, I'm trying think. to run Rob Stark and Damon on the wings. Oh, oh there you go. Just set them up. Oberyn Tyrell is my point guard. Oh, I would get uh, Elena Tyrell as my point guard. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I think this show is knocking it out of the park uh, this season. Like last season, I was not hooked. And I, even this season, like it took me to last episode to be hooked, but I'm hooked now. Like I'm back into like listening to old Game of Thrones stuff. I'm like watching old shows. So like that means I'm hooked back in. That's right? where I'm at. I'm listening to podcast. I'm listening to yeah. Cinema Lords every week. Him recap. Yeah, I love your recap. I'm, it. I'm all over it. So I'm, I'm, this season's been great. Appreciate it, boys. Yeah. yeah no, this episode was big for me. Uh, like I said, I kind of was. I really liked the pilot two and three. I was kind of, you know, iffy on. But this this sucked me right back in. Uh, I'm very very excited for this week. I want to yeah. know what the fuck Damon's gonna do. I think that's my biggest question mark right now. Right, it's he's like, got to get involved with all this stuff. He's got to yeah. be. Yeah, I agree. Um, he I'm got gonna... word. He got a Raven. You know, he knows that Cole's moving and shit. So yeah. yeah. And real quick, uh, who who's Cole communicating with? Is Cole communicating with um, Eamon? because he keeps getting notes right before like important things happen? And I don't know who, oh, what yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah. But it happened this week, right before the the battle happened, and I That's imagine you know, him, and, him and Eamon were were planning to do that surprise. But like I, that note seemed like it had something else to do with. Did he take know. that note positively or negatively when he read it? it? Like he smiled. He seemed like he smiled a little bit. So that must have been yeah, from Eamon. That, That's when he decided that they were moving in on the attack. That was yeah, like during the, that was right before they moved in. But yeah. why would you need a Raven to tell you? That, you know, it was odd because you know he had the signal in place. Uh, I just didn't. It would be well, that's because the of the dragon. So he doesn't know if that dragon's gonna do what he wants. Like okay. I said, yeah, he doesn't know okay. if that dragon's gonna be like, I want to sit here and eat all the goats and get gotcha. standing, or I'm gonna go rip a dragon neck. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I okay. did love seeing Vagar just like as soon as Amon oh. was like, Not yet, dude. He was just like sick. I'm going back to fucking bed. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he literally just hit the snooze button on fucking yeah. Vagar, and Vagar was just like sick. That's yeah. a girl. Vagar's a girl. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. a badass that's right. lady, is what she, she is. is. Assume, she sure is. Don't gender dragon assume, bro. They'll fuck you up, bro. <laughs> so we knew, like I said, we knew May Lee's was the biggest one for their side. Now we're gonna you'd have to imagine we're gonna need a serious team up. We're gonna need to take like fucking two or three dragons to take on this motherfucker. There's some bad oh, yeah. fucking bitches out there that are unclaimed right now. That one we saw a fucking Damon singing to, it's hard to tell because it was inside of a fucking cave, but that thing was pretty big. The untamed the un uh, the one that hasn't been like found or whatever. Yeah, at the end of season one, he like goes into some cave. He's singing some song yeah. in Valerian or whatever, and then yep. we just see some dragon fucking roar yeah. a bunch of flames. Yeah, they showed he one big. of the untamed dragons this season. It was the the bastard dude looking out into the into the sea. That's us uh, sea smoke. Yeah, that, that, Lane, that Lane that, was dragon, right? That, no. There's a dragon called like the cannibal or something, isn't there? Yeah, there's the cannibal. Yeah. There's the sheep stealer. The cannibal. There's uh, yeah. because some like two of them just are dicks like they're just there's like, like wild dragons on dragon stone i think the cannibals two one. so there's two wild ones rhaenyra's side has six dragons untamed but like unclaimed but they're tamed okay, okay. yeah but uh then the other side has to find their own and they get their own dragon seeds and they have two that are just roaming wild one's the sheep stealer and then the other one's the one you saw that sea smoke or whatever okay Gotcha. All right. I know, like, we just mentioned Leno real quick, but I know he supposedly, like, just dies basically in the books, and he kind of did that whole gentry, like, row off on a little boat. He's obviously – he has to come back in this series. I don't know that. I'm That'll be different from the books. Yeah. I'm excited to know what happens with that. Yeah. Like, thrones really give people happy endings, and they don't really let people die unless you see their bodies. So I feel like he's yeah. going to have to be back in some capacity at some Speaking point. Speaking of Gendry, Gendry got a happy ending. If you watch that story in full, Gendry has oh, a yeah. storyline. They go to him. They're like, we might need you. He's like, I'm in. And he takes his giant <laughs> and he fucks everybody up from there. He just fucks everybody up. Ends up fucking head of the Riverlands, right? Oh, the yeah, uh, Storm's in. Just like, yeah, he's chill as fuck in the books. Like, he gets this girl, this bastard chick. Like, yeah. I think they're going to do some sort of like a, a Sex and City spinoff with the, uh, with the, with the Valerian that 
Lenoir died. We were just talking about no, the gay one. We were just talking about. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna show him like towards the end. He's gonna be an Essos. He's gonna be like super gay, and he's gonna. Yeah. Like, it'll be like, like Sex and City. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Game goes to Bravo. That'd be like, huge. Colin Ain will be like really into it. Yeah, Colin. <laughs> Colin doing TikTok videos on it. Can you believe his armor? <laughs> oh shit! Uh, do you guys have anything left about this week or no? Yeah, Not that's really. it for me. Other than her dying, that's a huge death. Big blow. Oh, for sure. Oh, she yeah. She showed herself to be a pretty badass character. Yeah, like I, said, I love that. Uh, that strapping was very cool. Yeah. yeah kind of annoying. Annoying. Burns beyond belief at this point. His metal is actually fused. The metal in his armor, which is Egg in the Conqueror's armor and crown, is fused to his skin. Oh, that's right. So that's what that. off. I will. I won't tell you what happens to him, but he uh, he makes it through that. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I, like I said, there's if you unless you see dead body on screen, there's no way oh, yeah. like which he even kind of did this week. He was kind of dead. <laughs> yeah. Why did why did Eamon even have a short out too? Unless he was fucking yeah. Gonna go and, and no, yeah, he was going to end it. You know, yeah. Allison and next week say, uh, like, is he dead? Is yeah. he alive? And it's like they're not gonna they're not gonna ask that question unless yeah. yeah. His, right. his, I think the I think the bigger question is is if uh, is if Sun uh, Sunfire is okay or not? Right, yeah. the dragon. Right. That thing got we saw it get fucked up by May Lee's a little bit, a couple scratches, and then obviously it plummeted to the ground yeah. from beautiful high. Yeah, great color. Yeah, they yeah. they did do a, a good job. I feel like a really yeah. showing the gold and shit of that, yeah. one. and the red too of May Lee, which obviously is the name of the episode, the red dragon and the gold. But. Yeah. That gold dragon was my favorite one so far. Just like oh, it yeah. looks so cool. I mean, I know Egan sucks riding it, but it, there's uh, a blue one I want to see. I haven't yeah. seen the blue one yet. No. I thought uh this Bayless last week was kind of cool too. It was like fucking like green and white, like stripe. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Those are like little jet fighters, dude. Yeah. Little, yes, that's a good yeah. Chomped up. You gotta use those like strategically, like right. You know what I mean? Just quick gorilla hits, <laughs> but no one knows how to use dragons in war. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> they just trained to like fly them. No one's well, like, all these to, like, are un people. Untra yeah, untrained Not for war. against each other. Right. <laughs> I'm very curious. Like we haven't seen Jace's dragon aside from when he flew off last season at the end of the basically to fly off that message, but we didn't get a good look at it. We yeah, it's small. It's very small. It's one of the yeah. small ones. No shit. No bueno. No um, bueno. but yeah, no, I don't think if, if that's it, I think that's all we got, right? Yeah. Yeah, good thanks. Episode. And thanks for having me on. Thanks for having no, me thanks, on. Thanks, thanks for coming on, boys. I appreciate for sure. it. For sure. We'll have to uh maybe do it again at the end of the season. We'll have to do a round table and everything. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but all right, yeah, we'll talk to you guys again next week for an episode five breakdown. Thanks as always to Kirk Minahan for putting the show up on the network. Thanks to the boys, Luke, Mick, John. Appreciate all you guys coming and doing the show. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next week.